Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at are they awake to this connection? So there are three groups to choose from today. Group one is this crystal along with these oracle cards. Group two is this crystal along with these oracle cards. And group three is this crystal along with these oracle cards. So if you want to take a moment to center, focus on your breathing, and feel whichever group, maybe multiple groups, perhaps all of the groups that you are most drawn to, I'll give you a minute to make your selection. And there are timestamps for each group in the description box of this video, so you can go ahead and jump ahead. Hi, group one. You chose this crystal. Put that right up here. And we'll start with um, these cards to see, is this person awake to this connection? So we have serenity. The angels are awakening you to inner and outer peace. The roses kiss. Rainbow Dragon, the Page of Swords, the Seven of Wands, Five of Pentacles, and the Fool. So I'm seeing that this person has definitely um, undergone some kind of awakening. Um, for a lot of you, it'll be a kundalini awakening with that rainbow dragon, kind of the, all of the chakras um, lit up, all of the chakras activated, this, this influx of energy, this flow of energy that could be quite overwhelming to this person. Um, it could have been very you know, sudden with a kundalini awakening, very startling. Um, it could have really raised their perceptions and awareness of the world around them. Um, definitely a physical sensation and a physiological sensation that would have been quite new to them. Um, so it's something where they may have really tried with the Seven of Wands to kind of um, push that away or resist that. Um, again, very, very kind of overwhelming. So it may have caused them to retreat from you to try and again, retreat from these feelings. Um, but in this card here, the serenity card where it says the angels are awakening you. So this person is in the process of after that kind of initial burst of the Kundalini energy, um, it's this kind of um, gradual unfolding, this gradual awakening process that this person is currently in. Um, we also have with the rose here and the roses kiss, um, that reference to kiss again, this can pertain to a kundalini awakening that has taken place and kind of these deep layers within this, within this person's perception, um, I feel of themselves, of the world around them, and also of the connection with you that there's really this blossoming occurring to where at some point in time they may have really pushed this connection away. They may have, you know, distanced themselves, try to remove themselves, try to really shut down that energy with the Five of Pentacles. But it's something that they're starting to feel the sweetness of it. Um, that initial shock is kind of wearing off. So they are, they're leaning into 
the potential of this. They're exploring some more of those deep layers with the kind of the petals and the folds of both this flower at the rose's kiss and then also in the serenity card. Um, this angel is seated within the petals of, a, of an open lotus flower. Um, so both of those to me are very symbolic, um, again, of this awakening process that has happened, that kind of, that burst of energy that pops open this very tightly held bud. And then, you know, these petals just kind of are expressing themselves or exposing themselves. There's a lot of, um, of sweetness, of tranquility there. So this person is definitely more at ease with this. Um, with the Fool, I think that it's something also where they definitely are, you know, awake to this energetic sensation um, between the both of you, this, this energetic connection, this cord. And it's something that, you know, in their own way and in their own time and through their own process, they are leaning into exploring this. Um, or they may have gone from this energy of resistance with the Seven of Wands and trying to kind of shut that out with the Five of Pentacles, that they are moving in the direction of being more accepting of that, um, kind of acclimating to that energy, to that sensation of connectedness. And with this Page of Swords here, um, on this particular card, usually the Page of Swords, you know, that can talk about um, an epiphany or some kind of a truth or a message that needs to be delivered. This can also be very um, profound or kind of like set ideas or thoughts, just very opinionated. But in this deck, on this particular card, I don't know if you can see that, but his sword is blunted at the end as opposed to sharp. So I'm feeling that this is really indicating that where this person may have been very, you know, opinionated about you, about love, about, you know, um, kind of the universal mind, the worldview that they had, they may have been very certain of things, certain of their reality, the direction they were headed, where, what they want, um, that something has really um, kind of eased up in that sense. It's kind of... Um, They've taken the sharpness, kind of these sharp opinions or these very certain beliefs. Um, they've kind of eliminated that or are in the process of alleviating that to take a more gentle approach to this. Again, kind of lean into this energy, to explore this energy um, where they, you know, they may have, again, had these kind of very definite opinions in the past, opinions of you, opinions of, you know, connectedness. Also on this card here, on his shield, it's a figure, it's two people, it's a man and a woman, but, you know, gender aside, I'm just, this to me seems like counterpart energy and they're both they're standing in these these vessels or these cups almost so I feel that this person this can indicate that this person is again awake to this connection between the both of you um, it's something where you know they're willing to approach this willing to explore this albeit a bit cautiously you know they have their guard up they're sort of um, they're dipping their toe in the water they're stepping forward you know they're curious they're curious to explore this, to lean into this. They're very aware of this. Um, they're not rushing in full force. They're not jumping in, you know, head first, but they're definitely trying to, you know, just take this one step at a time. But there is movement happening in the sense of, you know, leaning into these feelings, leaning into the sensation, um, the energetic exchange between the both of you that might have been very overwhelming in the past for them, um, that they are instead, you know, feeling a little more comfortable, a little less timid with kind of leaning into that, exploring that, um, seeing where that goes, maybe doing some research um, about twin flames, about soulmates, or just about, you know, energetic connections between people. And I feel also on this Rose's Kiss, there's a ladybug here with her wings kind of spread and ladybugs are definitely, you know, a symbol of luck. And so I feel that this person is really, they're starting to shift their perspective to feel very fortunate for having experienced this, experiencing this activation, this connection between you, um, where they may have been kind of closed off or I'm feeling like for a lot of them, it was just very overwhelming, energetically very overwhelming. You know, a kundalini awakening, um, that energy exchange, that activation, like with this, you know, this dragon here, kind of the kundalini serpent. And, you know, we've got these these kind of um, reverberations of energy right here at kind of at the crown, at the tip of this serpent, um, this dragon. And so it's definitely something where when that was activated through a kundalini awakening or through um, just the energetic exchange between the both of you that, you know, it, it's a very, it's powerful. It was very much... Um, it awakened them and kind of um, 
fine-tuned their perceptions, not just of you and this of, of this connection, but I'm feeling like in many ways this has kind of bled over into other areas of their life. And so it could have, again, they were trying to kind of shut that down, shut that away, ignore that, deny that. And something has shifted. Your person is opening more up to this. Um, they're definitely awake to this, aware to this. And there is this energy of considering themselves lucky to have met you. That as some of these changes that might have been very overwhelming, um, very kind of chaotic at first, very kind of frightening even. Um, that that's something where you know they're they're seeing the world in a more vibrant way. They're seeing love in a more vibrant way. They're seeing the connection between you as kind of multi-dimensional, multi-faceted. And it might have been something you know like the connotation with dragons um, that often brings up kind of like this shadowy energy or it's something you know fearsome. But with this rainbow dragon, this is just so luminous here. So it might have been something where they really feared the connection, feared the sensation, and tried to really shut themselves off to it push it away, um, move in a different direction, kind of isolate themselves off from it with that five of pentacles. But it's something where, you know, they, as that energy persists, even despite their kind of being closed off to it, that it's had this ability to kind of seep in through the cracks of them and, you know, really to create some very wonderful changes within them in terms of their perceptions, the way they're showing up in the world, um, some gifts that they're discovering about themselves, um, some certainty, certainty about their life purpose, kind of a renewed hope. In many other ways, um, this energetic force, this energetic connection is, is having some benefits for them. Um, it's led them on this journey of, you know, seeking peace, seeking serenity, that inner peace, that inner tranquility and contentment and so where they may have been resistant I feel that they are very much awake and moving into a space of being at peace with what they are feeling between the both of you so let's get a little more clarity about this for you group one is this person awake to this connection Okay, and they say, I love you so much, I simply cannot hide it. So that's that energy of if they had kind of resisted this, or resisted that initial jolt, the awakening, um, and kind of the energy flow, the energy exchange between the both of you, and they'd kind of tried to push it away or move away from that, reject that, deny that, um, that it's something that, you know, they're leaning more into that. On this card here, it's these two people that are just right on the brink of kissing. And so that definitely relates back to this, the roses kiss. and. You know, they may have been previously kind of distracted, even on this card, like we have, you know, there's the thorns, but at the center of that is just this luminous and fragrant and, and beautiful and open energy. So your person previously could have just been focusing on those thorny aspects, very kind of frightened of being hurt or frightened of um, the sensation that they were feeling. It could have obviously been very sort of, of, of new and they were feeling this very acutely. Um, perhaps for the first time, uh, most likely for the first time is what this is really seeming like with this kind of the mass scale of this awakening that this this relationship, this energy exchange between the both of you is set apart from other experiences that they've had. And so where they may have been trying to hide away from that, kind of push that away, shrink away from it, um, they're leaning more into it. They are becoming more accepting of it. They're very much aware of it and there's a definite shift from really denying this, um, shutting their eyes to it, and you know, just kind of moving into the space of yielding to it. And they also say, I love you to the moon and back. So this is really, you know, with this full moon here, um, some illumination has occurred. Um, this person could have also, through the process of that kundalini awakening, they could have been um, propelled kind of into this dark night of the soul, um, which, you know, feels very much like that five of pentacles energy, that kind of out in the cold. Um, so by kind of shutting off to this, denying the connection or not, you know, really exploring those feelings or trying to kind of suppress that sensation, um, look the other way, uh, kind of trying to turn off as best as possible through distractions or some kind of form of numbing out or just denial um, to, you know, this 
very vibrant energy flow between the both of you but some illumination has happened they've come to this fullness they've come out of some kind of of darkness of kind of ignorance and denial and they're really starting to see and recognize this connection as something very compelling um, the energy of the full moon like what's on this card you know that's a very it's a magnetic energy the full moon has um, a distinct energetic effect on the earth on tides on people's moods on you know just so many different um, electromagnetic factors and forces between that celestial and that earth plane and so this is really speaking to me again about this person really being magnetized drawn into exploring this um, that this energy this connection has been pulling on them even in the times when they were trying to shut it out trying to close their eyes to it ignore it um, and it's almost they're at this point where they're having some more clarity about this that this pull this draw is not something to be feared but they're leaning more into this as something very glorious something very wondrous to behold and feeling very lucky to have experienced this um, I feel a lot of them are feeling very lucky as well that you know despite their actions to kind of push this away like with the seven of wands or you know shut their eyes to it um, close themselves off with the five of pentacles that they feel very lucky that you know this connection is still here that the energy is still able to be felt and explored now that they are at this point of being comfortable enough um, to explore that to open their eyes and look um, there's a sense of gratitude that you know the time that they've taken even to just to themselves um, acknowledge this and accept this accept this as a part of them um, and not a part of them in terms of a burdensome energy, but a gift, something they've been gifted with, um, a privilege to feel this, to feel this connectedness with another person, that even um, through the distance and through the space that this connection still is very much alive and this energy is there waiting for them to, you know, just kind of lean in and explore this and feel this and allow themselves to be transformed even more than they already have been um, through this exchange. And they also say many sleepless nights, extreme sorrow and emptiness. So this to me is really tying in with that energy of the five of pentacles. And this could have been the state that they were in, feeling very desolate, very alone when they were at the stage of, you know, denying this, rejecting this, turning away from this, that, you know, they felt that opposite. They felt the opposite of this sweetness, of this serenity. Um, and so... The process of rejecting this, it was very necessary in order to, again, create that energy of contrast to where then this person was able to make an educated and an informed decision as far as opening their eyes to this connection, opening their eyes to this energy, exploring this, because they had created for themselves the sensation of desolation. And so, you know, nothing goes to waste. All experiences can be used as lessons. So it was very, you know, and can be teaching tools. So this period, this initial period after this awakening, perhaps this Kundalini awakening, you know, and being propelled into this dark night of the soul, perhaps their actions could have propelled you into a dark night of the soul as they kind of push this away. And, you know, you both are on this five of pentacles. This is two figures who are, you know, in this, in this, energy of desolation in this kind of feeling of being out in the cold there's also on this particular card there's a kind of a robed skeleton which reminds me of you know death and the grim reaper so this could have also you know involved a process of an ego death which was happening um, that both of you were again um, independently kind of on a parallel path sort of thrust into this energy of having to go within having to release expectations to you know disconnect from your previous ideas of love or your ideas of yourself or you know the universe um, connectedness and to really be reborn into a new and more ascended version a more self-aware version this is very mutual energy here and so this is really just tying into you know any kind of anxiety or feelings of loss that this was again very necessary to create this contrast to where then that free will choice can be made in an informed way of you know the two polarities leaning into this and you know the feeling of that connection the feeling of sanctuary and serenity and possibility or turning away and pushing this away and continuing to remain blind to it deliberately blind to it deliberately ignorant which then would result in kind of um 
a feeling of being constricted or a feeling of emptiness. Um, again, isolation and desolation. Despite you know how many friends or family or other things might be going on, that at the soul level it would almost um, that something would be would be missing would would feel like a deprivation almost of you know really recognizing the possibilities and the potential aside from 3D factors, but just energetically speaking of you know this this energy this energy exchange between two people. And we also have I don't love the karmic. I realize I made a drastic mistake. My love is for you. So this can be um, a confirmation for those of you where, you know, in the process of this person kind of pushing away this connection, denying this connection, closing their eyes to this, um, refusing to wake up to it or just not being ready to wake up to it. If they moved in another direction, say with, you know, another partner into another relationship where, you know, the, the connection wasn't as deep, it was, you know, more manageable, it was something that energetically they were more comfortable with, they were more used to, then this is really indicating that that, you know they've had that clarity they've had that that awareness has been has become apparent to them of this feeling of desolation um, this feeling of lack with the five of Pentacles and it's really caused them to kind of open their eyes to that contrast the other side of the coin the polarity of you know what they what they feel is even possible um, through investing more in the energetic connection with you and, you know, karmic, that doesn't even have to be a third party. That can even just be a mindset. That can be um, a narrative, a way of thinking, a belief system, um, a habit, a lifestyle. There was this energy of perhaps this person trying to kind of numb out or distract themselves um, from this energy, this very powerful uh, kundalini energy, this, you know, this this life force, this, this energy of, you know, higher level love that exists between the both of you. You. Um, and so it's something where, you know, they could have turned to some substance abuse or, you know, just various distractions. Even work can be a karmic um, cycle, a karmic relationship or different, you know, friendships or family members or, you know, just mindsets is really coming up, um, a way of thinking of things, um, their expectations versus what the universe, the opportunities the universe is presenting. So they have come to this place where they are, you know, they've had this realization that whatever they have chosen to focus on, whatever they have um, have needed to do or, you know, have chosen to do in order to kind of try to silence these feelings, silence this awareness awakening that you know is has been taking place even through any period of resistance they have still been awakening they have still been going through you know this this ego death this dark night of the soul and by resisting such things it makes the process all the more difficult all the you know it, it puts the emphasis on those kind of deep and heavy feelings and so this person is really um, this is confirmation that this person is really awakened to this process through all the pain and you know the the maybe the harsh truths that they're finding out about themselves and coping mechanisms or you know just um, situations people perspectives um, that this is a gift um, that through all of that kind of devastation, the sense of loss, the sense of, you know, not really belonging in their own life anymore, um, that on with that comes the gift of possibility of creating something more, um, opening the mind, opening the perspective, opening themselves up to this very transformational energy, um, this very transformational energetic connection between the both of you that can bring them beyond their limits face to face with, you know, the parts of themselves that they have most tried to deny, um, really causing inventory of what's working, what's not, in order to shed that which they have outgrown or which is not suited for their highest growth potential in this lifetime so that they can embark on this journey of, you know, stepping into a fuller and more vibrant expression of their soul. So let's get a little more clarity about this for you. Group one. Okay, so we have solitude, retreat, introspection, silence, go deep within yourself. So this is definitely confirming that, you know, this person is awake to this. 
They're awake to this connection. They are not, you know, they've been awakened by this connection and they're really moving out of this energy of kind of denying it, um, rejecting it. And, you know, very privately, they could be going within searching, you know, for answers, really exploring this. They could be doing some research, looking up soulmates, twin flames, um, soul connections, you know, counterparts, any number of things could be could be coming into their path, into their awareness. But it's something where they're exploring this, I feel, mostly within themselves um, as they're ready to embark on, you know, leaning more into this, feeling more into this, seeing what, you know, this has for them, what this has in store for them. Um, so they could be also kind of withdrawing or disconnecting from karmic people, karmic cycles, or just a, just a pattern of being where they were kind of pushing this away, pushing away um, this kind of urge to grow beyond their comfort zone, this, this energy that was prompting that. And they're leaning more into this, into really evaluating, you know, who they are and what they want for themselves. And we have spring. Your love is blooming. Your answers arrive in spring. So this is definitely um, an energy of awakening here. You know, spring is the season where the world um, and nature kind of bursts forth with color and life um, after a period of solitude, of quiet, of winter. So that fits very well um, also in terms of being, you know, adjacent to this solitude card where, you know, this, this person is they're coming into more awareness about that. Their perspective is changing. Um, the way they are seeing and receiving this energy is changing. They're opening their mind to this as well. They're opening their heart to this connection. Um, and this could be something where, you know, you, you might notice an energetic shift. You could already have noticed an energetic shift within this person or something could become apparent to you. You might hear about something related to them um, through people you know in common. You could see something on social media. You could see this person out and that the change, um, even just in the way they are energetically carrying themselves or that they are approaching you or responding to you, there could be a very dramatic change to that, a very obvious um, kind of expansion of their energy and of their receptivity. And we have outcome, results, conclusion, ending. You will get a resolution. So this is really talking to this end of any kind of period of resistance, resisting this energetic connection, resisting, you know, the the force that exists between you, the both of you, which is seeking to, again, kind of shake them out of that comfort zone to really expand them, expand their perceptions, the perceptions of themselves, um, of you, of, of the world, of love, of kind of the purpose of the soul, um, even concepts of spirituality or, you know, just this inventory of long held beliefs they've had and kind of how that's, how that's manifested in, um, what they're seeing around them and really dreaming for more, um, wanting for more. This person is in the process of, again, kind of releasing some karmic things, closing out some cycles. And we have awakening, realization, progress. Your twin is awakening to your connection. So there you go. There's a confirmation right there that they are awakening to this. Um, that initial kind of burst has happened. And for a lot of you, they're done um, in the energetic sense, kind of running from this, denying this, pushing it away. And they have shifted and are shifting into that energy of receptivity, of acceptance, of exploration um, and appreciation. So let's get a couple messages from their higher self for you. Group one. Okay, and they say trust in divine timing. So I feel that this is their higher self encouraging you um, not to try and rush the process, that this is a process of awakening. Um, this is something where this person may have tried to suppress or deny this connection for a very long time. And so, you know, think of all the work that you've done on yourself in maybe a period of separation that you find yourself in. Um, that person, your person also has some work that they need to do on themselves. Um, they still have quite a journey ahead. 
um, in order to you know release the things which are no longer serving and to really you know take back their power in any ways they need to in their own life to step into that you know that fullness of their being that confidence to really align with their with their soul path with their purpose um, and so divine timing is at play but um, this is definitely indicating that you know wheels are in motion a shift has happened and so you know it's something where now that this person has kind of stopped that resistance and they're leaning more into this um, things will go very quickly um, a lot of this you know some of this deep and heavy work and this release these things could be happening simultaneously a lot of things kind of cycles closing um, things kind of falling away and a lot of growth happening at a very rapid pace because energetically you know you're both connected through this so the work that you've done on yourself and you continue to do on yourself can really help to um, kind of propel this person along magnetize this person along um, there is free will of course they could come up to you know more periods of resistance that's natural that's inevitable that you know there's only so much that the psyche can handle there's definitely you know deeply entrenched patterns within people um, generational patterns you know it's it's a process it's a gradual process of kind of letting go of resistance and yield um, but this is indicating you know and they're indicating to you from their higher self that they they are on board with this they're on track they've made a very important step of you know kind of rejecting that the presence of that energetic connection which you know you feel you acknowledge and you've gone so far into that and with that through that um, and even beyond that and so they are now they're in alignment in that sense of you know taking that very important first step of recognizing that the connection is there and it's actually a very big step because if some time has passed then there's this this concept that's making them very um, very hungry to find out more very curious because if some time has passed the fact that this is still here this energetic connection is still here that it's making them again very um, very hungry to find out more to explore this um, that they're not going to want to be in this energy necessarily of just sitting with it you know experiencing it that there's this eagerness to really get out there and explore and they say don't be tempted to lower your standards so if you're feeling this awakening within this person you're feeling you know you even maybe run into this person then they're a little more receptive to you um, they are encouraging you to you know keep the boundaries that you have worked very hard to establish keep your standards stay in that sense of empowerment um, that there's still a lot of work that this person has to do and you know despite how things might look on the outside or if you're very excited to hear from this person some of them could even kind of reach out prematurely or you know reach out simply because they're you know they're feeling this they're acknowledging this but they aren't they aren't necessarily in vibrational alignment with you yet they're not necessarily fully prepared and equipped to you know step into that reciprocal relationship with you so there could be this kind of leaning in and then pulling back reaching out and distancing themselves um, and so they really are encouraging you to hold the line hold your boundaries um, stay at your vibration because it's it's encouraging them along it's kind of helping them along this process um, and so to again not um, to try to stay very grounded in that to not let your excitement or you know this sense of of kind of relief and of joy and of gratitude that this person has come back around to you know kind of um, keep your you know try to keep your feelings maybe at bay in in a certain way or you know just take some time with things um, give this person the opportunity to you know at their pace kind of lean into this kind of explore this um, because they're definitely there will come points where you know maybe they're trying to rush into something too fast or you know they they get triggered they have some more work to do on themselves um, and so by taking that into account keeping that um, in your mind at the forefront if you have you know a, a contact with this person some some communication or you're feeling them energetically to understand that wheels are in motion but it might not necessarily be time yet for that that end result that coming together in the 3d sense that there you know again still could be some work to do on both your parts and the work will be different because of you know the work that you both have already done or it looks like in this person's case that they had kind of resisted doing so it's you're both still a work in progress in, in many ways 
and they also say balance your low, lower chakras. So this really talks about grounding, um, grounding that very high level, high vibrational energy of this connection between the both of you, this kundalini energy. Um, as this person is stirring, you may feel an influx of that energy. Um, Kind of an intensity and intensification of this connection where things may have been you know kind of at this um very kind of even pace maybe things felt a little cold on their end um, you've just been focusing on yourself working on yourself and then you know there's all of a sudden kind of this burst this this kind of boom of energy almost like you know coming out of the season of winter and then that warmth of the spring sun and just this pop of life and this electricity you may feel something similar to that energetically between you and this person so they're really letting you know that grounding your energy grounding yourself is again very helpful as far as anchoring down this energy and because you are connected with them they can feel that they can sense that and it provides them some stability and also you know if a lot of them can look to you energetically or you know literally in the physical world can look to you for examples of you know how you are managing how you are living your life knowing that you are feeling the same energy that they are feeling they may be looking to you if you practice yoga or meditation or you know, if you discuss these things, um, discuss them with them, or, you know, you post about that on social media, these are all things that this person um, can look to to help them kind of navigate through these things. So with those lower chakras, that's root chakra, sacral chakra, and solar plexus chakra. So this is definitely speaking to, you know, staying in your power with that solar plexus chakra, remaining empowered. Um, again, not lower, lowering your standards or just kind of, um, because you've been waiting in anticipation for this person, um, overlooking the fact that they might not be quite at that place to meet you in a reciprocal level. So, you know, just the, the place that you've come to as far as your standards, what you want for yourself, what you want out of this person, hold tight to that and they can that gives them the opportunity to kind of rise up and meet you. Um, you know, stay stay in your sense of, of self-worth, of really appreciating and loving yourself, loving yourself for how far you've come on this journey. Um, and that's that sacral chakra energy of just, you know, focusing as well on your passions, on the things which bring you joy, on your creativity. Um, that can really help as well. And then with the root chakra, you know, again, focusing on your, your security, your abundance, your sense of safety, your, your place in the world, the niche that you have carved out for yourself. Yourself, the people that make you that make you feel secure and make you feel good family or friends you know people that you that you associate with through volunteer work or through work all of these things focusing on all of these things right now is you know it's helpful for this person but from their higher self they really want you to again prioritize um, your health and well-being as they are going through this kind of process of awakening and unfolding and change um, they don't want you to be uh, kind of thrown off balance, thrown off kilter by the energetic sensation or the movement that you might be feeling from their end of the connection as they are kind of going through um, that process of going deeply within, releasing things that no longer serve and stepping into that higher version of self. So I'm going to finish this reading for you group one with some guidance from spirit about this, about this connection. Okay, so we have cleanse and detoxify. With great love and respect, we ask you to detoxify your precious and sensitive body. At your request, we'll help you to develop life-affirming ways to deal with stress, as well as ease any sorrow at shedding your old ways. Give your cares, worries, and concerns to us and feel the beautiful grace of your newly purified body. So this ties in really well with what this person is now embarking upon as well. This um, period of, you know, releasing what no longer serves, cleansing their perceptions, their ideas about love, their ideas about, you know, the connection with you, um, about who they are, about their purpose in this lifetime. And so in tandem with that, what are some ways that, you know, what are some things you need to release? Maybe it's an expectation of timing or what that's going to look like or, you know, how this person's going to approach releasing any expectations of, well, now that they're awake, that must mean that they're going to come as a, as a whole and healed version of self. Um, also, you know, that kind of ties in with this balancing the lower chakras. Um, 
you know, again, kind of looking at any ways where you're not standing in your power, you're not feeling your best, really focusing on that. Um, perhaps releasing some kind of negative thought patterns, negative habits, um, drinking a lot of water, meditating, yoga, spending some time in nature. All of these things can help to really balance out and ground your energy, making sure that you're, you know, you're eating foods that make you feel good. Maybe you're cooking for yourself. Um, maybe you're, you know, treating yourself to a, a dinner or a lunch or a snack, a treat from, you know, your favorite restaurant, your favorite bakery. Um, but in some way, just being very conscientious of what you're putting into your body, both in terms of food and even in terms of you know, the people that you're hanging around with, um, the the types of media that you're taking in, what you're watching, what you're listening to, um, making sure that, you know, you, you are, you're filling your body, you're nourishing yourself with things that make you feel good, make you feel positive, make you feel hopeful. Um, anything that kind of is dimming your shine or really bringing you down or, or keeping you in a very negative space that at this time, because of this, um, kind of this energetic shift that's happening with this person that you, through this connection, you're feeling that, you're picking up on some of that. That can definitely be energetically stressful. You might be feeling that in your body. You could even um, in some way feel through, you know, different aches and pains or different kind of emotional sensations. You can kind of sense um, the process that this person is going through and what they are, you know, addressing, what they're facing, what they're releasing in an energetic sense. So it's very important to keep your body temple and your um, etheric body, your aura, your chakras, keep those very much in, in order, in alignment. Do what you can to kind of purify and detoxify and kind of release anything that you're picking up um, from afar from this person and then also anything that comes up because as they are going through this process it's going to stimulate some things within you some things that you know some clutter that needs to be cleared for you so like with that energy of spring this also reminds me of kind of this spring cleaning so that could be something maybe literally physically it could be good to kind of refresh your space refresh your decor um, you know, donate, sell, or discard things that are not in resonance with you, that, you know, are just, they don't really speak to you. Um, you know, change your look, change the way you're dressing, your hair, um, your makeup, your jewelry, your style, you know, just any number of things that really um, kind of releases an, an old and outdated part of yourself and where you're stepping into that newness. Um, and even just through those very, you know, kind of mundane things, those very just ordinary things, it sets a vibrational presence precedent that again because of this connection this person will feel and you know the work that you do in this capacity it's really it's for yourself but you can you can definitely help to motivate this person to kind of help this person lean into this process this experience and these feelings um, by the joy you're cultivating within yourself the sense of accomplishment um, the sense of purpose um, this sense of authenticity that you're you're working on and you're expressing it can help them to feel that energy that process that process of change is something that's really safe that it might be difficult but on the other side of that lie um, immense blessings and joy so those are your messages group one i hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the video if you like the reading, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.
Hi, group two. You chose this crystal. Put that right up here. And let's take a look at these cards to see is your person, is this person awake to this connection? So we have positive thoughts. The angels are advising you to focus on solutions instead of problems. Waking the lion. Sound. Eight of Cups. Page of Cups. Four of Wands. And Ten of Pentacles. So this person is definitely awake to this connection. Um, that confirmation right there of waking the lion. Um, they have an awareness about this connection. Something has occurred to them. Um, something has become clear to them with the positive thoughts um, where they may have been kind of resistant or thinking very negatively or very opposed to this connection. Maybe even the idea of twin flames or soulmates in the past that something has really shifted. Um, they're aware of this, they're awake to this connection. Um, despite what might be happening in the 3D, what they are saying or not saying, um, with sound, the words that are spoken or that are, you know, held within, it's something that they are thinking and feeling um, very positively about this connection. Um, it's something that they feel very grateful for. They feel that this is something, um, you know, that this is a gift from the divine, like with this page of cups and we've got this kind of fish jumping out of the cup that, you know, it's something that they, they feel that they've been gifted this connection. Um, it's something, you know, with this page of cups and he's kind of, he's not walking on the ground, but he's, you know, elevated. This is almost like this is helping him to kind of rise above that, you know, they're very much aware of this. Um, they're aware of the connection between the both of you as kind of being beyond other things that they may have experienced in love in the past, beyond their expectations. They're feeling this energy as something which really helps them to rise into the best version of self. They're feeling very energetically supported by this connection. And I feel that a lot of them are really actively, deliberately sending positive and loving thoughts to you. Again, despite what might or might not be happening in the three, in the 3D, um, in their mind, in their, in their conscious mind, in their deliberate mind, they are, you know, saying all the things, the words of I love you that they might be holding back on um, in the physical world. This person could be, you know, listening to a lot of music as well. Um, that's putting them into a loving vibration, um, that's making them really feel good. Um, this is something where, you know, with sound, they could also be really strategizing what they want to say. Um, some of them could be writing poetry, writing down their thoughts about these things. Um, they could be in the process of, you know, trying to formulate some kind of communication to you to let you know that, you know, they feel this, they feel this connection. There could be some telepathy that's happening as well um, on this sound card with the, with the third eye here that is kind of lit up and, you know, it's functioning as this beacon. So again, these loving thoughts, this loving energy that this person is very deliberately and consciously sending your way, thoughts that they could be sending your way. Um, with the Four of Wands, that is, you know, this card of, of harmony, of stability. You know, these, these two figures on this card here, they're definitely, you know, they're having a good time. They're dancing. I feel that this person's really, um, they're, they're working with this energy. They are in harmony with this energetic connection. It's something that, you know, they, they feel that this adds a lot, that this contributes a lot to their life. It's something where if they were in a period of resistance, um, of kind of being closed off to it that they have, you know, shifted into the space of really leaning into that, really working with that, working with your energy. Um, 
again working with some maybe some energetic tools or some things that they've they've come upon or that they're you know trying out sending you these telepathic thoughts these thoughts of love these feelings of love not really sure if you're receiving that are you receiving the message they could even be trying to you know kind of telepathically send you songs or song lyrics um, if you're Claire audience, you could be, you know, hearing particular songs, getting songs and dreams um, that are all this person through their, you know, being delivered by their higher self and kind of the higher dimensions. But it's very much the 3D self that, you know, is aware of this, is, is trying to do this, is setting this intention. They could be setting the intention to meet up with you in dreams um, right before they go to sleep. That this person is with this waking the lion. They very much have stepped into their power. They're feeling very empowered by this connection. This lion is very much, he is awake. He's aware of this connection. Um, they are aware of your energetic presence. They are aware of the energy exchange between the both of you. They could still be in a process, a learning curve of seeing kind of, you know, with this page right here and, you know, offering these this love, these loving thoughts, these telepathic thoughts. Um, this could be very new to them. They're not really sure what techniques to use. They could be, you know, exploring that, reading about that, um, learning about that, things that just you know, occur to them as far as intentions to set or, you know, trying to deliberately send you messages or thoughts, you know, with their mind, um, that they're still, they're in the process of kind of figuring that out, figuring out how to do that, what works, um, how to deliver those, those, those feelings, those thoughts, but it's definitely something that, you know, they're feeling very good about with this Ten of Pentacles. Um, it's something that in the very material sense, the 3D sense, that 3D person, despite again, what they're saying or doing in the 3D, or maybe their lack of movement towards you or lack of acknowledging this um, in a very concrete way with their conscious mind they feel very fulfilled they feel um, very much that this connection this energy between the both of you um, this energetic connection that it is a gift it's something that you know they are learning to kind of harness that to really step into this abundance mindset they could be focusing a lot also on perhaps manifesting a new beginning with you manifesting a chance with you or you know really manifesting um the kind of life that they've envisioned for themselves, really manifesting um, that best version of self, really, you know, stepping forward into the world in a high vibrational fashion, kind of moving away with that eight of cups from any sort of feelings of heartbreak, of loss, of despair, really letting go of maybe some preconceived notions or some kind of negative thought patterns toward love, toward you, toward the connection of the past. Um, and they are instead, you know, shifted that focus toward wanting to participate in this, although they may just be at the point where they're very comfortable um, or it's just, you know, maybe circumstances dictate they don't have the opportunity to approach you physically, um, but they're taking full advantage of the fact that that connection is there, that that, that energetic line is open um, for them to tap into and to, um, to work with and communicate through. And with this Four of Wands, this is also the 1111 card, so this could definitely be um, um, a confirmation of a twin flame. Um, you could be seeing 1111 a lot. This person could be seeing 1111 a lot. Um, also with that sound card, you know, there could be other kind of messages or confirmations that are coming in, um, things that they are reading, words that they are, you know, seeing on the sides of buses or billboards. Um, they could be hearing your name. You could be hearing their name. Um, you could, again, have a lot of communication in dreams um, during meditation. This, If this person meditates, um, if you meditate, then there's this energy of really tapping into one another, um, perhaps doing very deliberate guided meditations, which if you're not doing that can be a good idea um, because this person seems like they want to communicate and it may just be that all that's available or all they are comfortable with at this point is in the energetic sense and so there's almost this invitation with the page of cups um, to tap into that because they're very open and receptive to communicating with you in that sense so let's get some more clarity about this for you group one Oh, and also before I, or and group two, excuse me, I called you group one. Um, so for group two, before I move on to, you know, this clarity, also in these two cards here, there are owls, um, which are definitely symbols of wisdom. Um, in the Page of Cups, 
it's usually um, it's a fish that comes that jumps out of that cup um, which can also be like a salmon is a symbol of wisdom so in for all of these kind of these signs right here I'm feeling that you know this person is very much um, they're wise to this connection. Um, they are aware of this connection. They are, are awake to this connection, to the dynamic that exists between the both of you. Um, this energy exchange, the fact that, you know, they, they are able to feel you and sense you and anticipate you from afar. They're very aware that they are connected to you um, from afar um, in the energetic space. And it's something which it feels very harmonious. It's something that, you know, they're very, they're thinking very positively about this. It feels very good to them. Um, they're very much, you know, working with this process of awakening, um, working with this process of ascension. They have kind of moved beyond any sort of difficult and kind of dark night of the soul stage. And they're really in this, in this phase of, you know, they've perhaps done a lot of um, work on themselves, shadow work, a lot of kind of releasing people, things, places, thought patterns that no longer serve them. And they're in this process, having created sort of this, this void, which the universe abhors a vacuum. So they've created this kind of vacuum within their life. They've let a lot of things go. And now they're in the process of really manifesting what they do want to see planting those seeds and really having these experiences of this abundance becoming you know made known to them and it's something that they very much are feeling um, is in conjunction with this connection with you they could again be trying to manifest a new beginning with you um, kind of with this knowledge this wisdom this more wise stance that they are at as far as you know what this means what this energy means what's possible with it um, that there's a larger purpose to it that they're thinking very positively they instead of looking at this as like a problem or a hindrance that it's something that they're seeing as a blessing as a gift um, as something that can really enhance their life um, and that you can both enhance each other's life and experience through this so they're definitely they're in that energy of working with this very much aware of this um, aware of the connection so let's get some clarity for you group two about this have you are my sunshine you make me happy when sky is gray that's why I love you so there's that energy of you know and this looks very similar to this these two figures on the four of wands how they're just you know kind of arm in arm and just sort of dancing with this that this person is very much awake to this they're aware of this they see you as a counterpart they feel you as their counterpart as kind of their you know, the yin to their yang, um, this match, that there's this vibration between the both of you, it, it's harmonious. It's something that, you know, can help them to create some joy in their life. It's something that, you know, where they may have maybe had some fears of love or fears of intimacy in the past that they've released a lot of that. And they're very much leaning more into this and seeing this as a blessing, as a gift. And they say, I choose you, my heart and soul are for you. So again, this energy of just this, this closeness, this bondedness between the both of you, very much awake to this connection, aware of this connection, and choosing to lean into this. Any kind of resistance energy um, of the past, uh, they have discarded that. And again, this, you know, what you're seeing in the 3D might not reflect this, but energetically speaking, um, you know, and with, with their conscious mind, um, very consciously, this goes beyond just energetically. They may not have, you know, made that approach or, you know, really made this known to you in a 3D sense, but they're very much aware of this harmony, this balance that they feel with you, um, this sense of kinship, this sense of sameness, um, the sense of deep compatibility at a soul level um, that they feel with you that they may not have ever experienced with anybody else and so they're choosing this they're choosing to lean into this to to see the bright side of things to to imagine a positive a positive possible future for the both of you to imagine the best for where you know being accepting of this connection this energy exchange and really you know going with the flow of it with the ebbs and flows of it deliberately tapping in 
into you know your energy to this connection um, making communication with you in the energetic sense that it's something you know that they're they're choosing to do at this point in time they've kind of this energy of resistance they're leaving that behind um, and you know everybody has free will choice they could do something with this in you know the physical world circumstances might not be conducive to that you could both be in other relationships um, you could be at a geographic distance from each other or you know they're just they're in the process of kind of working up that courage maybe working up the words to say um, like on this card here of the ten of pentacles it's all these other birds you know in the background like we've got this one owl but then it almost you know it's all this other flock of birds that is kind of flying in from the from the distance so they've got this wisdom they're wise about this they are aware of this connection they are awakened to this connection and a lot of them could be planning um, what they want to say to you even if it's something where you know you reconnect as friends that in some way you know they're 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 choosing to to really you know even if it remains just in an energetic sense to you know really recognize this connection this link between the both of you and we've also got true feelings must be evolved and exposed in order for the spirit to grow and flourish so they are very much aware of you know the feelings they have for you aware of this connection there's this desire to again express things i feel that they are deliberately tapping in trying to send you messages telepathically trying to express that to you express that love energy to you in you know whatever way is possible or that they feel comfortable with at this point in time and we've also got it may not be the love that you imagined but it is a love that is true and never dies so again they're recognizing this this connection the eternal nature of this connection um, that despite what is not happening maybe in the 3d that energetically you both you know you are you are entwined with each other and if they had been resistant to that or had kind of seen that as an encumbrance in the past that they are now seeing this as you know a gift as a virtue for them as something that's really um, can enhance their life it's something you know it's very meaningful it's very unique it's something which you know it's it's an energy source that they can that they can tap into that they can exchange with you that they can communicate with you beyond any kind of obstacles or barriers in the 3d that you have this energetic connection this force that can both you know uplift you and, and feed you and that you can you can feed into you can help encourage each other and support each other in ways that again um, are beyond any kind of 3d limitations or constraints so let's get some more clarity about this for you, group two. Okay, so we have blessings, protection, attention, love. Your guides are always with you. So this is definitely talking about this person, you know, shifting their perception of this energy to seeing it as a blessing, seeing this as a gift, um, recognizing this as kind of a divinely orchestrated and a divinely protected love that, you know, despite what might be happening or not happening in the 3D, they feel that, you know, this, this bond between the both of you is unshakable. They're recognizing that. They're appreciating that as, as very unique and standing out um, from other experiences that they've had in love or otherwise with other people. And we have split energy, options, unfocused, multitasking, decide what you really want. So this person could be, again, at this kind of crossroads of trying to figure out what to say, how to move forward with this. Um, they may be most comfortable at this point just communicating telepathically or energetically, sending those loving vibrations your way. There could be other obstacles um, in between the both of you in the sense of other relationships, other circumstances, maybe geography is a factor, um, something that's kind of keeping you both on opposite shores, um, literally or figuratively. And so it's something where you know, I feel also with this reference to split energy that they're recognizing this as a connection that, you know, they can both give to and receive from, um, that there's a lot of reciprocity here, that this person is, they're not just focused on taking what they can get from this connection, but they are very much interested and are actively, you know, feeding into it, um, receiving love through this connection 
and giving love to you through that connection as well. And we have twin flames, eternal love, reincarnation, passion, twin seeking union. So that's a confirmation right there for you if you resonate as a twin flame. And we also had that 1111 card, which is the twin flame card. So they're recognizing this. They're recognizing you as a soulmate, a counterpart, a twin flame, just depending on you know, the language that they that they are using, the awareness that they have, um, the information that they have. I feel that for a lot of you, they are aware of what a twin flame is, or at least a soulmate, um, that they identify you as such. They see you as different from any other relationship they've had. This connection transcends the boundaries of time, um, any kind of physical boundaries that might be between the both of you. And you know, they, they seek union with you actively. Um, they seek to connect with you. Um, for the most part, it can be at this point energetically that they're seeking that union, um, seeking to link up with you in the energetic realms. For a lot of you, um, this person is really, you know, trying to manifest like with that Ten of Pentacles, manifest a new beginning with you or manifest a physical 3D union. Um, so for group two, this is very much um, an awakened and an, and an enlightened person. This person could have gone through a lot of shifts and change from the last time you were dealing with them, has really stepped into this place of receptivity and awareness um, and is really viewing this connection as something very beneficial to them and something that they they are interested in in nurturing and helping to further and we also have forgive tranquility peaceful mind and heart freedom from the past so this person could have been working a lot on you know forgiveness forgiveness of you know past partners that hurt them something that you know had kind of blocked off their heart chakra to love that an expansion has taken place um, there's also this energy of you know that they they perhaps are staying in the energetic um, communication between you where they're feeling most comfortable because they they know that they need to ask forgiveness for something maybe the way that they treated you or kind of dismissed the connection previously that they've come to this awareness they've opened up to this they've they they have this clarity they are awake um, and it's something where you know they might kind of be held back um, held at bay a little by fear this uncertainty not really wanting to sabotage um, the kind of the give and take between you both energetically um, out of maybe saying the wrong thing in the 3D or you know kind of bringing up an old wound or you know this possibility that you might not be in this vibration of forgiveness you might not be willing or able to forgive them for whatever happened in the past so for a lot of you that could be why they're kind of just um, keeping things at an energetic level because again through that energetic exchange, it, it kind of bypasses any of the sort of the 3D or ego-based or kind of wounding that um, creates some barriers or some blockages or some resistance. So let's get a couple of messages from this person's higher self for you, group two. What do they want to say? say there is no need to worry so if you are you know you're feeling this energy you're getting these signs from this person you're getting this telepathy feeling this influx of loving energy and you're wondering maybe why they're not showing up in the 3d um, if there's something more that you could be doing in order to facilitate this or you know kind of wondering if you're you're kind of imagining this or just kind of projecting this kind of wishful thinking um, then they're letting you know from your higher their higher self that you know there, there's put those worries aside put those kind of fears aside that the exchange you're experiencing, the ways you encounter this person in dreams, the, the telepathy, the, the loving energy, that it's very much real, it's very much genuine, and it's coming from a very conscious place with this person, that they may be quiet, they may be holding back um, in terms of their physical movement towards you or the words they're speaking, but with their mind, through their heart and through their soul, they are very deliberately um, trying to make up for that kind of deficit of physical concrete action or words in your direction by by making sure that despite how things look on the outside that you know and that you understand that there is this this ocean of love that they have for you um, that they're very much aware and awakened to this connection and you know very interested in working with this participating with this and growing with you um, 
and it might just, you know, they might not be sure how to kind of take things beyond the energetic level. It might be something where, again, because of your circumstances, that that might not be, you know, a possibility at this time. Um, it might be something where, you know, maybe you move into the realm of friendship even if you've, you've both found other soulmates, other, you know, soul connections, other, you know, people that you're with, you have families, you don't want to, you know, disrupt that, whatever your individual story is, but it's something that they're not, they're wanting you to not worry about the details of kind of like the when or the how, trust that everything will work out, trust that, you know, they're aware of this, they're awake to this, that energetically they're right there with you, that you are already in this union in the heart and the soul. And they also say spiritual mission, rite of passage. Are you ready? So this can really speak to this person kind of manifesting, like with that Ten of Pentacles, manifesting a new beginning with you, um, trying to kind of figure out, formulate what they're going to say, how they're going to make that approach, um, that they very much are, you know, they're awake to this, they're aware of this. Um, they are linked up with you energetically to really utilize this energy to propel both of you into your, onto your path, onto your higher purpose, um, to utilize this for, you know, whatever mission your soul has set out in this lifetime to accomplish to achieve kind of your your great work um, that you have incarnated for and they also say you are seeing the truth so that's another confirmation that they are awake to this connection they have seen the truth with all those owls you know they're they have the wisdom about this they are very much aware of this they are seeing this from a new perspective any ways in which they may have felt encumbered or overwhelmed or burdened by this or you know just um, we're kind of in this state of disbelief, not wanting to recognize it, not wanting to see that, that that has shifted, there's clarity. And this is also a confirmation as well that the telepathy you're experiencing, um, the visitations with this person in dreams, in meditation, the influx of loving energy you're feeling from them, that that is genuine, that is true, that they are sending that, not just from their higher self, but the 3D person is consciously sending those sending those loving thoughts and at the very least holding you in a very loving space very positive thoughts about you even if they're not sitting there saying well i'm going to send this person love and hopefully they get it you know they're just as they're thinking about you and they're thinking back about the connection and reflecting on you and you know tapping into this energy they're feeling it from a very positive space um, that these are our loving thoughts that they have also there's no need to worry and forgiveness um, any kind of misunderstandings or things that went awry with you in the past and you might be you know kind of worried about the things that were said and done and you know could this person ever forgive maybe you maybe you're the one that needs to ask for forgiveness um, for again things that were said or done and so this is really uh, kind of a message there that there's no need to worry that you know you're already forgiven um, there's no there's no need to to be hard on yourself about that that they're thinking about you despite what might have happened before despite where you guys might both be at um, physically at this point in your in your connection that they're thinking very positively of you um, very loving thoughts of you so let's get a closing message some guidance from spirit for you group two about this connection okay so we have focus on service your soul desires only to joyfully serve and to swim in a constant stream of bliss this stream continually feeds you everything you need. Put your entire focus upon staying in this stream of giving and receiving in every situation and in all that you do. So that's a really great confirmation there of what I was picking up with this, this energy, um, this force that this person is awake to, that is, they are tapping into, you know, that you are able to tap into. And I feel a lot of you do, um, where you're both, you know, equally wanting to give and receive from this. Continue to do that. Spirit wants you to continue to, you know, tap into this, lean into this, um, send those loving thoughts to this person, receive their loving thoughts with gratitude, um, with an open mind and an open heart and you know re really stay in your place of empowerment um, focus on your life purpose what you feel that you are here to do 
Um, and to recognize that energetically this person, even if they are at a distance from you, they're supporting you in that, they are helping you in that, you're working toward that together and vice versa. Um, you're definitely helping this person to, to get in alignment with their path, with, with their purpose for this lifetime. And so to continue to focus on that, to tap into this, to give and receive from this connection, um, that you're, you're doing everything right with that and to continue to do that, to continue to open um, to the possibilities um, that, you know, that this can be a connection which can have a very kind of joyful result um, and that this is something that despite what might happen in the happen in the future in the 3d sense that this connection between the both of you is eternal it's an unbreakable bond um, and it's an energy that you can continue to co-create um, with each other and in your own lives kind of with the encouragement with the boost of this energy um, it's kind of this idea of two hearts beating as one you know that it, it kind of it enhances your your endeavors you can use this to you know enhance your creativity tap into this work with this person um, this person is your they're your partner they're your co-worker they're your co-creator even if this is being done um, at a distance while you both are leading very different lives in the physical and the 3d for some of you you can come together with this person in the future as a friend or maybe you work together on something some kind of joint mis mission some kind of joint purpose or endeavor Ever. For others of you, this is something which, you know, you're you're making your way toward this physical 3D union with this person. Um, but ultimately, whatever the results are, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take away from the fact that this bond is unbreakable. And it's something that, you know, you're encouraged to continue to, to feed into, feed into with loving thoughts and be open to receive the, the loving thoughts and the, you know, kind of the vibrational boost that, you um, is being sent to you by this person through this conduit of this connection. So those are your messages group two. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the video. If you like the reading, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.
Hi, group three. You chose this crystal, put that right here. So we'll take a look at these cards first to see are they awake to this connection. Ignite your heart. Archangel Shamuel is opening your heart, allowing you to love more deeply. Earth magic. Purification. The High Priestess. Page of Pentacles. Ace of Cups. And Nine of Cups. So I feel for group three, um, this person is undergoing some kind of heart chakra activation and this could be something that you are feeling, um, you know, energetically speaking and your chakra, um, feeling that kind of at a distance from this person. Um, if you feel that there could be something medically wrong, obviously go to the doctor, go get that checked out. Um, but it could just be, you know, other than that, other than medical reasons, um, you could just be energetically sensing this from this person, some kind of expansion or, you know, some kind of activity or movement in the heart chakra region. Um, this could also manifest as kind of this influx of feelings of joy. You could be also feeling um, kind of moments of deep and profound um, sorrow or bliss that could be going along with that, um, energetically sort of picking up as this person is kind of opening their heart, um, opening that to the possibilities of love, but then also experiencing um, some of the things, the heartbreaks of the past that are coming up for clearing, for purification, for release. This person could be going through, you know, some kind of emotional ups and downs at this point, or this period of catharsis that you are kind of picking up on energetically. Um, so I feel that for a lot of you, this person is starting to awaken to this connection. They may have been operating with a very closed down heart chakra when you encountered them, where, you know, you felt the connection and on some level they would have felt this as well and then it could have triggered them to kind of back away to turn away to shut things off to really um like on this high priestess and she's holding her hand up there really kind of keep this at bay um push this away remain very stoic about this not lean into this perhaps really you know deny this intuition about what their heart was telling them because of again with all these waterfalls on here just these various kind of disciplines appointments in love, uh, maybe things from, you know, their, their family of origin situation, um, their experiences in the here and now in the material world in the past, with that earth magic, you know, just the roads that they've walked down, maybe other times when they've tried to open, you know, their heart to love or other experiences gone sour, other romances that kind of, you know, fizzled out or led to a lot of disappointment. And so when you and this person encountered each other, um, they could have, again, with these, these hands around this heart, they could have been very kind of closed off in the heart chakra, kind of blocked off to love. Um, and it feels like in general, there is an activation taking place through divine intervention. I feel the divine has definitely stepped in here, um, that this person, you know, it, they are at this point in their journey where now is the time. Now's the time to crack open that heart, to release these kind of pent up emotions, to heal that, heal that heartbreak. And with that, um, in conjunction with that are, you know, these thoughts of you, these thoughts of the contrast between, you know, just the, the feelings that they have had with you, the sensation that they've experienced with you how that is contrasting to maybe some preconceived notions they had of love, some ideas of love, experiences of love in the past. They're very much being drawn um, to this energy of, you know, sensing the connection between you in a very positive way. Um, 
this taste of satisfaction that they may have had even in you know the brief encounter with this person that it's really standing out and it's been the catalyst um, as time may have passed they may have kind of shut this off shut off the possibility of a connection not been open to it but nevertheless the impact has been there um, it has it has made an impression upon them energetically speaking um, and it's something which has really helped in addition to you know this divine intervention it has helped to crack them open from the inside to open them up to a different way of experiencing love um, kind of moving beyond these these ideas or these preconceived notions kind of um, this earth magic card and she it almost looks like these feet um, are kind of walking they're walking away so really encouraging this person to kind of leave behind any pains or you know again preconceived notions or experiences of love in the past maybe love is disappointing or love as painful that you know on this purification card and this figure here you know he's got this illumination but you know the scale of the figure compared to you know these waterfalls these these wounds these weeping wounds um this catharsis that is needed to take place in the emotional scale that it may seem very overwhelming to this person there could be a lot that they have held in that they have repressed um, a lot that needs to be released and cleansed before they are you know in a place of being able to vibrationally meet you to vibrationally match you so this person is in the process of waking up they are coming into this awareness change is being is happening um, it's very much with page of Pentacles you know it's it's at this beginning stage stage um, there's some kind of a seed a seed of experience which has been planted um, through their just even energetic exchange with you but like on this card and you know there's this um, this face that's kind of it's kind of bound they're still kind of you know really tied up there are a lot of knots within their heart that they must untangle there's a lot of kind of ideas um, ways of viewing it viewing love or you know viewing the world um, the, the the things that they were maybe thought they were looking for that would bring them satisfaction um, having to really reevaluate that to expand their mind to open their mind that their heart is open and they are now in this process of kind of stepping into opening these other parts of themselves their perceptions of things um, there's definitely an awareness that is there. It's an instinct, it's an inclination. Something that they are recognizing is significant about you and this connection. Um, but it's something that, again, I feel they're really, they're igniting this. They're opening themselves up to this. The awareness is coming. They can sense that there's something there, but you know, there's just all this other flood that is happening within them that they might not necessarily be able to pinpoint um, or have the language for the significance of this connection. They may not be aware or believe in soulmates, twin flames, anything like that. Um, on this page of Pentacles here, we've got these, it's these two figures that are, they are also trees and they, it's kind of like one pursuing the other. So to a certain extent, um, this person could be kind of running, running from their feelings still, running from this truth, this knowing within them that this is a significant connection, that this is a connection which is different from others they've experienced, that, you know, this is love and it's pure, um, it's pure sense, that they're being cracked open to that. But they could feel very overwhelmed by, you know, these this great influx, this great power of emotions, both very positive and, you know, this pain that they've kind of suppressed and stuffed down and that it's coming up to the surface. Um, they could be crying a lot. They could be going through, you know, a lot of things in that sense. Um, you could be picking up from on that from this person as well and you know kind of energetically helping them to purge and purify um, this could also because of this energetic connection it could really be um, kind of irritating some unhealed wounds within you that you know this can then be looked at as an opportunity to to cleanse and purify maybe some kind of more deeply entrenched things or you know some things maybe you thought you had you had kind of worked on that you'd come to resolution on um, but then through this person kind of cracking open at the heart level um, that it's exposing some kind of deeper underlying roots to some wounds um, we've got like you know this emphasis here on the ground and all these kind of roots 
which are, you know, they end in kind of like stars. So something, you know, some magic that can come through this um, kind of a deeper level of healing that's even possible for you and ultimately for this person through really getting to the heart of the matter, really digging beneath the surface of, you know, triggers or ways of being um, of ideas or even for you like getting into you know some some things you thought you'd worked on that you'd come to resolution about but that are resurfacing for you at this point in time um, asking you to go in deeper go in deeper to that um, really transmute that into you know some deeper wisdom for yourself um, some deeper awareness for yourself um, trying to find even the gift um, in the sense of the ways in which the darkness maybe that you'd been through has really allowed you to become that light for yourself, to become that luminance, that illumination, that illumined being, um, maybe even striving to make the world a brighter place than you know the, the experience of the world that you had had through people or through circumstances, that that has really motivated you to focus on the light, to you know shift your perspective and to try to make a positive difference um, for others where you can. Um, maybe being an inspiration for others who are going on their own deep digs, their own deep dives to provide hope and clarity and wisdom. So let's get some clarification about this for you. Group three, is this person awake to this connection? Okay, and they say, alcohol is my escape. So that can resonate for some of you if substance abuse is a problem with this person, an issue. Maybe this is something, a crutch that this person has kind of used to kind of dull out their feelings, to keep that heart chakra closed. Um, this can also, you know, alcohol is in terms of a liquid that can speak to, you know, this, this, this point of really being saturated in their emotions, being really overwhelmed in their emotions, being very focused on some of these deep and kind of toxic emotions that they have had. Um, and that could be really uh, taking the full focus right now to where they're feeling this connection, um, but they're not at the point of really necessarily exploring that yet because they're being cracked open to kind of all these other things that are muddying the waters, that are clouding their view, obscuring their view, um, giving them kind of a drunken view of the, the truth which underlies everything, which is this you know, love at the core, love at their center, love as a very sanctified and a divine force of nature. Um, the connection between you, you know, this the spark which has really instigated this kind of embarking upon this healing journey that both, you know, the divine has intervened and, you know, the connection between the both of you, that, that initial instigation is really, these two forces coming together has really helped to crack this person open, both from the inside and the outside. And so they could be in this process of kind of, you know, cleansing, of purifying, of detoxifying, sobering up from maybe a skewed perspective, um, kind of a blurry perspective perspective that they had of love or of you, of the connection, um, preconceived notions they may have had or just the ways in which they have kind of numbed or dulled out their heart center, their ability to be present in love or be open to love. And we've also got set the seed, nurture it and then let it alone and watch it grow. So this is really a confirmation about the seed that was planted in the energetic exchange between the both of you initially. And this could be somebody that, you know, you had a very brief encounter with that, you know, you weren't in a long standing connection with, or maybe you were and, you know, it just got to the point where you reached this emotional impasse. You know, the person could have been very resistant to love, very kind of fearful of commitment. And, you know, just even if you're with them currently, they could be very shut off in that sense. But this is confirming that there's been an energetic seed that has been planted in this person through connecting with you, through the energetic exchange between the both of you. This can be words that you said um, 
topics that you addressed, even using the word like twin flame or soulmate, and they may have really dismissed that and really shut off to that, close that off, dismiss that, but it's been a seed that's been planted nonetheless. And kind of through this sort of exterior divine intervention, that seed that you've planted within, that energetic cord that has, you know, kind of um, become the cord between you both, it always has been, it has always existed, but through your encounter with each other, um, through your interaction, it really you know it awakened something it it activated that and it's a process of this person becoming fully awakened fully activated um, so they are in the stage right now of you know that heart chakra cracking open um, in this being faced with the things that they need to work on that they need to purify they need to release they need to purge this catharsis that needs to happen so that the seed of love which exists within them which may have been kind of dormant or has been kind of waiting gestating below the surface so that any kind of debris that stands in its way or obscures it obscures its ability to thrive is cleared out of the way so then there's that potential for growth and we also have, he loves you so much that it makes him want to run, but he always stays because the feeling is so warm, comfortable, and inviting. He longs for it. So there's that concept of, you know, this seed of love, this, this cord of love, the activation of that love between the both of you, the soul knowing when you encountered each other. Um, and it's something which is very much, it's vibrating within him, it's, or, or her, you know, them within this person um, that you're watching this, this reading for. And it's something which, that's the part about the cracking open from the inside out. Um, that it's it's a feeling which you know it's very frightening perhaps it's something which makes this person want to shut down if they've been kind of holding love at arm's length or been really kind of closed off to that idea of it because of maybe experiences they've had in the past or some kind of preconceived motion uh, notion some kind of fear of intimacy um, that it's something you know at the soul level they they are longing for this they there could be some resistance on their part um, but they are moving forward nonetheless um, they are also being moved forward through this process that once that kind of activation has taken place and the divine has aligned circumstances that you know the these emotions could be coming up kind of without without outside of this person's control in terms of you know the heaviness these kind of feelings of joy and you know maybe these sudden tears or you know memories of something that they'd repressed or they hadn't thought about in a long time and you know there's kind of there are forces beyond their control that are at work here because this is this is the time this is the proper time for this kind of um this journey to take place that you know it's something where this person might not be interested in it they might not feel that they're ready but nonetheless you know the divine um, the divine forces the force of love that has a hand in all of this that is at work in all of this um, this person's spirit guides their angels you know god goddess source um, all of that that they are they have determined that this is the time, that this has begun, this process has begun. And so this person could still be in this place of kind of leaning into that and resisting it. I feel a lot of resistance is probably taking place. They're very much at this kind of the beginning stages of this journey, just starting to wake up, just starting to recognize or acknowledge that stirring within. Um, and through that moment of acknowledgement, it's kind of released these floodgates of all these other things that need to be cleared in order to really unearth um, um, that treasure within and we've also got I love you to the moon and back so this can really talk about you know this distance that this person still needs to go to become you know awake to this connection to become fully cognizant of this energetic connection between the both of you and this also feels like some guidance here that you know to recognize this journey that this person is on this is a voyage um, that this is something which can also move in cycles and stages and phases kind of like the moon phases that they've gone from kind of this you know this dark the dark of the new moon and they've been kind of cracked open that first little sliver of the moon the waxing moon that sort of comes um, and they're in this process of kind of building becoming illuminated about things in their life that are not working that they need to release um, 
blockages within themselves, kind of the ways in which they're self-sabotaging or self-limiting. Um, and it's something which, you know, they will come to that full illumination and then they'll be in that process of like with the waning moon kind of releasing all of that. Um, so they could be in kind of multiple layers of this, of this uh, process. This could be like a, kind of a rapid um, phase that is happening for them. All these things that are coming to their attention that are being illuminated, that are being brought to the surface in order to be released in order to be purged, um, in order to be purified from them, um, to get some resolution and some closure in order to, you know, begin the next stage of the evolution, the next stage of the awakening. And so the best thing you can do for this person at this time is really, you know, have some compassion for where they are at, some patience for this process, understand that divine timing is at work and that this is, it's a series of cycles. This is a series of phases. This is kind of an ongoing process that this person will, you know, kind of pull away and be in kind of in the dark cloisters within themselves and things will come to the surface, become illuminated for them. Um, there'll be a process of releasing um, and then back into this kind of this state of rest before the next leg of that journey um, happens. But that there is movement, there is change that is happening. Um, the heart shocker has been cracked open. It is being cracked open. Um, but this is not just an instantaneous thing that there's a lot that this person has kept in um, they've they've chosen to hide from themselves even and there's a lot of kind of debris it's sort of like um, sort of if you have a pond or a lake for example and you know you step into that you know it's very placid water and then you take a step into that or a fish kind of you know swims past and all that kind of sediment that debris from the bottom of this pond or you know this this pool this puddle it's kind of disturbed and the, the water becomes very cloudy very grant you know full of grains very granulated it's very obscured and it takes some time for that to kind of settle to sift to set you know kind of work its way out in order to be able to see again and it feels very much like this is what this person is going through this process of things being stirred up um, a lot of kind of chaotic uncertainty things they need to sift through patience that is required through this process ultimately both on their end and on your end um, while this is all taking place um, but it is with that guarantee that things will settle, things will kind of right themselves, order will be restored again, and there'll be an opportunity to then kind of view things with a clear lens, to take inventory of that circumstance, um, of the situation with some clarity. Um, but then there's always then, you know, that inevitability of something else that comes to the surface. Maybe, you know, some other little treasure is unearthed through that kind of disruption, something that then that person sees in that cloud that, you know, they want to hold on to, kind of a nugget of wisdom, a bit of, of learning, a bit of experience, or, you know, a positive, something positive of what they went through that they keep as, you know, the rest is kind of um, floating away, is kind of settling back down into, into the oblivion. So can definitely send this person some love and it can it can help them they definitely you know for a journey that that this person is on you've been through this yourself um, so maybe thinking back as to what you were feeling what you've been experiencing through this process of kind of activation and awakening this dark night of the soul energy this this ego death and this purging this ascension journey that it's very heavy um, so exercising compassion is definitely a good thing um, think back on what you've been through what you might have needed what really helped you um, what kind of loving energy was very helpful and you know send that to that person because it can definitely help them um, provide some comfort and some stability some grounding so let's get a little more clarity about this for you group three Okay, so we have lessons, knowledge, understanding. Look for the lesson in this situation. So this is really confirming this place that this person is at right now, that you know they're, they're in this process of kind of doing this inventory of themselves, even their views on love, relationships gone bad, things they may have held on to from the past. And they're coming to this clarity, they're being made aware of, you know, 
maybe some of the lessons in terms of things they tolerated in previous relationships that really disempowered them, ways they were showing up, or, or things that they may have kind of really deprived themselves of joy or satisfaction by being really closed off, really shut down to the idea of, of love and exchanging love with another person. So they're looking for some, some deeper understanding, some deeper meaning about who they are, what they've been through, and where they find themselves at this point. And we have split energy, options, unfocused, multitasking, decide what you really want. So this talks also about that energy of, you know, this periods that this person is in about, um, you know, really being interested in kind of addressing these things, feeling these things, this this rush of energy, the, these emotions that are coming up for them um, through this heart chakra activation that it's definitely, um, you know, they're feeling joy and they're also feeling, you know, these very kind of profound emotions, these kind of repressed things, um, maybe long buried memories that are surrounding surfacing for them. And so there's kind of this back and forth between feeling very accomplished with, with what resolution that they are that they are getting with um, really facing some of these fears, kind of, you know, addressing some of these demons that they have within them. Um, but then at the same time, feeling very overwhelmed by what's coming up. And then there's this urge to maybe kind of pull back, to kind of close down, to kind of retreat from this, um, which is understandable with some of this kind of heavy and kind of early stage um, purging that can come up in terms of when one kind of begins a spiritual awakening, begins on that ascension path, on that ascension journey. Um, it can definitely take some time to be to become acclimated to that sensation. The feelings can be very overwhelming. Um, the nature of what comes up can be very confusing, very draining. Um, a lot of different kinds of emotions can come up and it can take some time to really understand that it's a process. It's nothing to fear, um, but to really to lean into that and to walk through that fear and hesitation and to understand that you know, there really is a purpose through it, um, that the healing journey, that it's not all, you know, just rainbows and butterflies, that some of that is very kind of sticky and, and dark and very heavy work, um, and that it is a process. It's a very rewarding process, and it can take some time, a couple different, you know, phases or, or legs or you know, kind of layers of that cycle to go through before you start to actually see the change. You start to actually feel better, feel better about things. Um, you know, maybe you're not as triggered about certain things or, you know, you come to this point of, of having some resolution, feeling more optimistic, um, feeling better about who you are, where you've been and where you're going, what's possible. So, you know, this person, again, with that kind of page of pentacles, they're right in the ace of cups, they're right at the beginning of this. Um, but it's something where, you know, they're, you're energetically supporting them and the divine is very much energetically supporting them and also, you know, protecting them through this process, kind of guiding them along this process, um, not giving them more than they can handle, but just really nurturing them and kind of leading them along in this sense. And we have ego, pride, jealousy, self-preservation, walls, let your guard down. So this person could definitely be undergoing an ego death currently. Um, they could be facing some barriers that they have put in place um, against love, against feeling love that have really limited them in terms of, you know, both the connection with you, but also the experience of joy in other senses in their life, um, their experience of love, their perceptions of love. And so they're in this process right now of kind of, again, that heart shocker being cracked open, um, that ego sort of dissolving in order to, you know, step in to a fuller and more balanced version of self where the ego is not just driving, not just running the show, but, you know, is co-creating with the higher self as well, where there's more of a partnership energy. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're a, be, in terms of being awakened to this connection, um, they feel something, but I feel a lot of them are, they're really focused on, you know, this ego death, on these other things that are coming up. So it's kind of, it's something that's in the background, it's in the subconscious. At the higher self level, they are definitely awake to this. Um, they understand this as almost like a, an encounter, a meeting that was necessary between the both of you to plant that seed that, you know, at the proper time, 
and through the exterior pressure from the divine that both of these forces from the inside and from the outside would kind of collude, would work together in order to crack this person open, to bring down some of those walls, collapse some of those barriers, um, even just in a very small way, but nonetheless it created a crack where then there's this opportunity for, you know, all this kind of repressed emotion and these, these feelings to kind of seep through and, and be cleansed. And we have sacred space, altar, prayer, candles, commune with your own divinity. So this person could really um, be turning to spirituality or prayer at this point in time, trying to, you know, have some some answers, find some answers as to what they are, what they are experiencing. Um, they could really, you know, at this point be focused on developing their relationship with the divine as they understand it deity, God, source, as they understand it. Um, and so this, again, can be, you know, this part of the journey that they are on as far as this awakening, you know, and through that process, through that process of discovery, discovering who they are, what resonates for them, what energies they, they feel around them and how they experience um, the forces of creation and destruction in their own life. Through all of that, through cultivating that very personal um, that very personal relationship and that very personal and individual understanding through all of that, um, you know, you you come to this core of love that is sort of exists within everything. And part and parcel to that is this, this energetic connection between the both of you. So this is really talking about, you know, that, that through this process of exploration, um, signs will be given to them that they may not even be aware of it, but just energetically they're connecting with you in this very kind of sacred space that within their within their higher self um, they're very much aware of this there's a gratitude to you for the role that you have even played um, even unknowingly just in you know the pure energy exchange just in you following you know the nudges you were giving given in you um, kind of just participating in your own life and you know following the signs that you, again, were given um, to where you've crossed paths, paths with this person. Whatever it was that was said, the impact, the effect that you had on them, um, that really it left this lasting seed within them that at the proper time has now kind of, it's burst forth in a way, it has helped in this cracking open of the heart chakra, um, that there's a lot of gratitude for the higher self, for the role that you have played up to this point um, in this person's awakening, not just to the connection, but in general, their awakening. So let's get a couple messages from their higher self for you, group three. Okay, and they say, I am trying to become stable. So this really confirms these kind of, you know, heavy and kind of torrential energies that they are experiencing. And they're trying to really find their balance in that. Um, they're trying to find their footing through what is coming up for them, the experiences that they're having, the tower moments that they might be experiencing also in their life as, you know, kind of this, this spiritual awakening um, sort of takes hold and takes over and kind of permeates um, you know, they, they are definitely from the higher self level, they're letting you know that, you know, the kind of ground has been broken on this process in terms of, you know, like when construction is happening and there's that ground breaking, there's that first kind of, you know, penetration, that crack open before, you know, excavation happens. And then, you know, all this kind of digging, making the space for sort of the you know, the underground components, the things that are not really seen, kind of like the behind the scenes work. Um, and then after that period of time, then the construction begins on kind of the surface level. So they're definitely at this period, like with the heart chakra activation of ground having been broken on this process, on this project, the project of themselves, the project of their ascension journey. Um, that they have begun this process. This process has been initiated within them and they are letting you know from the higher self that they are, they're trying to find their footing. Um, they're in this process of purging where, you know, they are kind of vacillating between feeling very comfortable with where they're at um, and this, this sense of kind of overwhelm and feeling really off balance, off kilter. And they say, I know you think I won't follow through, but I will. 
So any kind of doubt that you have as far as this person really seeing this through, committing to this, um, you know, opening their heart to love, really working beyond some of these things. Maybe you're aware of some of the kind of the issues that they had had in the past. Uh, maybe some things with substance abuse that was kind of a coping mechanism um, with alcohol that was coming up. Or, you know, just you're aware of some of their kind of beliefs on love, a belief system or some hurt or some pain from the past they've been holding in. Even if you're not aware, just this, you know, the, the energy that this person was giving off of being very closed off to that. Um, or, you know, the, the spark of connection between the both of you and their kind of response of running from this, shutting this off, pushing you away, um, moving in the complete opposite direction that, you know, their higher self is acknowledging that on some level that there's some doubt um, that you might be having as far as this person being interested on working in working on these things, being willing or able to really, you know, work through a lot of this to make some drastic changes, um, to really level up in a lot of ways. You may have, you know, done a lot of work on yourself. You may be in a very, you know, different place in your life from when you were first interacting with this person. And that, so there's some doubt that they will catch up or that they'll do the work. And so, you know, you may have really detached and kind of set your sights on, on something else or, you know, just become really open to whatever the universe has in store for you, which is a really healthy place to be at, um, to move into that state of detachment um, and just, you know, sending this person love, holding them in a loving space within you, but not being so fixated on expectations, because then it allows this person the energetic space to to really, you know, do their own processing, to, to not feel that energetic pressure of an expectation upon them, but, you know, to again have this kind of vastness where these things that they've been holding, these, these issues and wounds within themselves that need to be cleared, that there's kind of the, the breathing room to do that. Um, and then also on the subtle levels, they will feel that disconnect, they will feel that distance. And because of this soul connection between the both of you, um, there will be this urge to, to kind of, to find that, to become close to that. Um, where it may have been something they ran from in the past that it almost reverses the polarity on that energy um, to, you know, they might not be able to put it to words or understand why, but then they feel that something is kind of missing, something's awry, something's, something's in, unstable within them. Um, and it's that, that kind of distance that's created in that connection. So that can really help to be a motivator for this person to, you know, continue this work because the more they're doing in terms of work on themselves, um, the more they're cleansing and clearing and kind of growing beyond things, it brings your energy closer. Um, kind of like that reference with sort of the muddy water, the you know the silt in the water and as they are you know kind of clearing that debris then it helps them to be able to really perceive um, that connection to really perceive the way forward in their life and to really be able to feel into that um, that eternal connection with you that no matter the distance or the circumstances is there and they also say we will be together again so from their higher self, they're letting you know that they are very committed to this, that this journey has begun, this process has begun. They may be at just kind of the fledgling stages of it right now, this awakening, this awareness that there's an ego death that needs to take place. Um, this person could be getting ready to embark on a dark night of the soul or they could be in that. So definitely, um, you know, if you're picking up on some of this stuff from the, from this person, you know, do what you need to do to really ground yourself, to really raise your vibration, to, you know, identify what feelings are yours, what feelings are you are kind of picking up from afar and, you know, lovingly release those things, send that person some love, um, you know, because they, they most likely really need it at this point in time, but definitely, you know, make sure that you're, you're not letting this bog you down, that you're not, you know, confusing these things with, you know, something with in you that is that is at deficit that is you know wounded or that is hurt um, recognize the work that you've done um, stay focused on your goals and on the things that really fill you with a sense of joy and accomplishment and that that can help this person as well to kind of do their own work and to find their footing and find their stability so I'm going to close this reading for you group three with some guidance from spirit about this connection Okay, and we have Shower of Abundance. To heal your financial situation, first give us your worries concerning money. We will guide you in order to show you how to create and accept abundance. As we work together, your financial situation will heal as fast as you allow. 
So this is um, speaking about a couple things to me. So, you know, again, if this guidance that came through as far as, you know, if you're picking up on this kind of this process that this person is going through and it might really be setting you off kilter, kind of interfering with you, um, you're picking up these heavy things, you're, you know, a lot of things are coming up for you, you're not sure what the genesis is of them to, you know, you're really being guided to, again, focus on your own abundance, on your own fulfillment, um, on this abundance of self that you have cultivated within you. And by doing that, you know, you can really help to um, kind of disconnect from what you're picking up um, energetically from this person. And, you know, sometimes even redirecting your focus to what you can control, um, focusing on, you know, building that sense of security for yourself, um, building that sense of accomplishment for yourself. It can really help you to kind of ground some of this energy or to really keep you in the here and now as opposed to kind of being tugged into the energetic space um, while this person is going through some heavy clearing and some heavy kind of ascension work. And this is also really talking about um, just even aside from like finances and abundance and money, it's you know, the statement here as far as the situation will heal as fast as you allow. Um, I feel that this is really some guidance to if you have not moved into that space of really being disconnected from outcomes or, you know, you're you're having maybe some negative thoughts about that this person will never change, nothing, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to wake up, they're not going to become aware, they're just going to remain in ignorance, kind of ignorance is bliss about this connection, they're not going to work on these things. Um, if you detach from that, you know, maybe work on detaching from that, um, consciously releasing those, those thoughts, those, those expectations of an outcome, then you move into this space of allowance, of receptivity, and it allows this person, without those energetic constraints, almost that energetic pressure of, you know, wanting a certain result or, you know, really wanting to, um, deliberately try and encourage them or make them aware of what needs to be done, pointing out the connection to them, either literally if you have contact with them physically or, you know, just energetically trying to keep your presence at the forefront um, of their awareness by thinking about them a lot, you know, kind of overly trying to connect to them, tapping in, um, you know, more than you more than what gives them the time and space to kind of figure things out for themselves. As you disconnect from that, disconnect from expectations, trust that you know the the love which you um, which you desire, it will come to you in divine timing, either in the form of this person after they've gone through this healing, this awakening, this ascension, or you know the universe will provide you somebody who is a vibrational match for you. Um, that you are not expected to you know just live a lonely life without love, um, but you might be standing in your own way in terms of being very fixated on a particular person, a particular particular outcome, a particular timeline. And so for all of that, when you move into the space of receptivity, you allow healing to take place. Um, healing about senses of abandonment that are causing maybe fixating on, you know, this uh, being attached to deadlines or what that's going to look like. Um, you move out of kind of this, this sort of fear of being alone um, and you move into the space of being very comfortable with, with yourself, with who you are um, in your independence. Um, you move into the space of trust that, you know, a partner, a, a soulmate, um, a very divine and high vibrational love will come to you. And so you allow this healing to take place within you, but then you also um, kind of energetically disconnecting, you give this person the time and space, energetically speaking, that, and even some times physically give them the time and space that they need to go through their own healing process, um, their own journey so that they can awaken not only to this connection, um, but ultimately awaken to who they are at their core beyond all their wounding and their triggers and, you know, their defense mechanisms. But awaken to that that abundance within them um, and that birthright of really experiencing love and you know leading a very fulfilling life and coming to the awareness that they have the ability to create that for themselves and to really shift their mindset to put them into that state of receptivity um, abundance and manifestation
So those are your messages group three. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the video. If you like the reading, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well. So I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.